Okay. Okay, hi guys. Um, I'm so sorry for the network problems. I had to end the live session to start again because it was hanging over a long period of time. And um, yes, okay, so TY is here again. So we're just going to go back. I, I apologize. Um, okay. Hi guys. Okay. Hi, T.Y. Hello. I know how these things can be. It's terrible okay. sometimes. I can't really hear you, so I don't know. Are you hear me now? Okay. Okay, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, perfect. I can hear perfect. you. Perfect. Yay. <laughs> so sorry. The network, it was hanging, so I had to go off to come back again, oh, so it's a oh. lot more seamless. <laughs> Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay 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 so all right so thank you ty you were you were saying that value was it's you have to define value yourself and then decide how you're going to communicate it to other people yes yeah. yeah. so does it mean that before you know because there's this dimension where a lot of people feel like oh you know but you should you should know that you know I am worth something like this, or, you know, I should be valued, but why, 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 why do I find myself in this place where people constantly don't think my, my work is good enough, or I am worth being taken seriously, I'm worth doing that. So do you think that comes from a place of the other people or from the place of that person as a creative themselves? No, it, it is. It doesn't matter where it comes from. It is yes. just when people don't see value in your work, you know? And the truth is, um, for most people, for me, it was like that as well. When I started my photography business, it wasn't even a thing. People saw portrait photography as one thing. You dress up with your family on Sunday, you go to Studio The Best or Photo Tech or Fats, and take a photo. And there was a value attached to that image. And everybody knew what it was worth. So when you, when I came along and I said, you know what, I could create something different. You know, I want to do portraits of women. I want to do makeover because I used to be a makeup artist and a hairstylist. That's where it came from. It was from the fact that I started off with hair and makeup. So I just wanted to, you know, see people, you know, see themselves transform. And I wanted to attract value to that. But people didn't see why, you know, they needed to pay anything for that. Do you understand? Right. In fact, when I first started, people felt like I should be lucky that they are giving me a chance. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, but we don't give up. You keep pushing mm. and, you keep pushing, and you keep pushing the narrative. And I think that value also comes from the people that you serve. Because if you give them a good experience, a good service, mm. a good product, great emotions, and their lives feel uplifted by their coming in contact with you, they are the ones that will drive your value. So a time will right. come when you no longer have to shout, value me, value me, value me, value me to everyone. <laughs> so your clients, every single person that you serve well will become your voice, speaking to every other person on your behalf. Other person. Yeah. Right. Is, is there any place that you, is there any work that you had to do on yourself as you grew you know, because you said back then, you know, there was, you know, because I can even, I can only, ima I can only imagine how you would have been even then when, you know. <laughs> so, was there any, you know, was there any work that you had to do on yourself? Is there, did you have to start seeing yourself differently? Was there anything that you had to do to yourself that now translated in maybe how you, the perspective or how you saw it as a whole, so okay. to speak? Let me let me tell you the truth. I didn't come into photography thinking that what I was doing was going to be successful. I came in with a lot of uncertainty. I couldn't guarantee that it was going to I didn't know that it was going to turn out well. So 
my spiritual walk with God played a very big role in that where, you know, I felt like I spent time with God and I saw him make certain promises to me, you know, and I got certain, you know, hunches that I was on the right direction. But in the physical, in the business that I was doing, the fact that I had a camera, there was no guarantee, you know, no mm. physical you know, that what I was doing was going to work. I had no one backing me up. I didn't have, like, some bulk money that I had put away. I started with absolute nothing. Like, zilch. Zero. No loan money for many uncle or aunt. Wow. Nothing. In wow. fact, the first job that I pay, uh, got that paid me money was a wedding. The bride wore yellow. And... Oh, wow. But <laughs> I shot with the little... Um, flash on my camera i didn't have the you know the speed lights it was yes, from that wow. my speed lights as in all the money i made from that wedding i went ahead and bought a speed light and that was how i worked over the years i would work and then i would build my equipment and then there was nowhere to get knowledge i mean we're really blessed nowadays there was no internet necessarily so i would wait for these magazines for my brother that was abroad and i would read like even the things i didn't understand line by line, page by page. But everything that I did added, was helping me build value in myself and my work. But one of the biggest things that I did was I got myself a life coach. So in 2005, oh, wow. before 2005, my first coach was Fela Drotori. And from 2002, Fela started showing us how to dream and project what could be possible with this thing that we were doing that no one really had done was doing that way at the time and then in 2005 i got larry Lushola to become my life coach and it wasn't even a thing at the time mm -hmm. what i'm saying is that what's going to help you grow may not necessarily be something that is popular now having a life coach in 2005 that wasn't even a thing you know right I, wow I found a, a community of support. Another major community of support was because I became very good friends with people that were on a similar journey with me. Kelechi Amadi Obi, Uche James Iroha, and Amaizi Ojekere, all four of us formed a group called Depth of Field, and we met every single week. And what we did wow. was tell each other forward. Kelechi was a lawyer, so Kelechi taught us about intellectual property and how to really value your work. You know, little things that we didn't know. We started from nothing. And then we started supporting each other. And what we did was we pushed value for each other. So every time every one of us made advancements, it was like we would come to Duka and say, I don't change camera. Okay, everybody would be like, yeah, me too, I want that new camera. So it was competition, but we were not competing against each other. We also made sure that whatever competition that we had was never against each other. So, for instance, wow. I would never take work that I felt belonged to Amaize. And Kelechi would never take work that he felt belonged to me. We never stole each other's clients. Do you understand? If someone called me and they were somebody else's clients, I'd be like, you know what, let me talk. This is your guy now. Okay, okay, let's talk about it. I know that he's stronger in this area, but don't worry, I can be us. We, we, we created like a support network. And Mm -hmm. Together, we started adding value to our craft. So I didn't do it alone. You know, it wasn't like mm -hmm. I just, and I'm Wonder Woman. I'm like, people should appreciate photography. No, it was something that was done as a community. No, no of us did it alone. Wow. <laughs> I love the aspect because I I know a bit about depth of field. Um yeah, that's the name, right? Depth yeah, because you shared, you shared, you shared about it you know before and and i, I remember kelecha madiobi also mentioned it back in the years when you know i was in a class with him as well but i also kind of so for some reason and i and i stand to be corrected it's almost like our reality is a bit different for the person coming into photography right now do you get what i'm saying because in the sense that there are now so many it's almost like there are now so many players in the industry. There are so many people. And I love what you said about there was healthy competition. You know, you knew the work. But I guess he, he had to come from a place of really understanding, well, I guess valuing the, the friendship you guys shared and on, understanding 
what each person's strength was and not feeling like, oh, okay, I mean, you know, someone is taking that, which is for me. So did you need to grow into that? Did you guys need to grow into it? Or it was just mutual respect for each other? No building stands on three pillars or on two. You needed it to be. Mm. Everything had a role to play. And we also realized that we were building an industry. We weren't just building personal care. Mm. Setting the tone. We were creating rules. So we insisted on doing certain things properly because we knew that if we didn't, then we we're going to make things harder for people that were coming behind us. So I think it takes you being the bigger person to think outside of yourself. The moment you start thinking outside of let me get mine, let me get mine, let me do this for me, then you truly start having access to wisdom that would outlast you and wisdom that wow. can elevate you. But when it's all, when you're just this vortex trying to get attention, praise, approval, and value to yourself, and that's what it's about, then you will struggle more because it's almost as if everything around you will fight against you. But when you come to an industry, whatever it is, saying, I want to give. Do you understand? I want mm. to give standards. I want to bring people together. Sometimes what we need to do, I, I, I look at a lot of young photographers and I'm thinking, it's so beautiful when I see, you know, people come together to do classes together. You know, when I see um, um, Prince Mason come together with other photographers and create images and show people how they did it. Yes, yes, yes. Power right there. Every time two people come together to do anything, what comes out of it will elevate everyone. It will not bring us down. You know, it sounds like uh -huh. talk, but I am mm. a real testament. And my career is a real testament of pretty much collaborating on even my first musical gig, I was a member of a band. I was a member of Kush. Yes, you know, yes. I see Bello right now, my biggest successes have been songs that I did with other people. So there's no reason why photographers can't come together to create businesses together. You shoot, I retouch. I style, I creative direct. You make the photographs, you retouch. You know, every month we take turns. Do you understand? Wow, and wow. Amen. We can come together. I mean, it takes trust. It takes credible yes. people coming together. But that's of why when you form friendships and you have your relationships tested so that you know that you can actually form this union. I love what you said about, you know, you guys had to realize that you were not just building yourself, but you were building an industry. And it's very evident, like, I'm sure, you know, it's very evident what the work that you guys would have done there and seeing how it's even playing out into how so many of us are, you know, rising and becoming, you know, just, it's almost like we see you guys as icons, right? I see you as an icon. I see Kelechi and Madiobi. And, you know, we needed to see that picture. Like I was saying, that I needed to see a certain picture to just know that, ah, oh God, this is, this is possible. Like I'm there seeing was, someone oh, doing this. Skinny Kelechi with no beer beer and skinny me. <laughs> And skin will really <laughs> not not in the, not in my eyes or not in the other people's eyes, but it was just like I never knew that this was possible. And I think you know, I mean, just even for you guys thinking about it, <laughs> just thinking about it in that time. I mean, I, I want to even say personally, I personally want to say thank you because I know that it was very, very. It played a huge role for me. So T.Y., you know, when it comes to, um, you know, as we evolve and grow our businesses and also, you know, valuing ourselves, getting the right people to also value us and also getting kind of the people that are meant for your work. How do you do? There are times that we, you know, creators actually face a waiting season. Okay. And waiting could be waiting in the sense of, you know, maybe you're transitioning sort of, or you're waiting in the sense of, you know, your work needs to change or you're waiting in the sense, okay, you're not getting as many clients as you probably used to in a certain time. And I find that those times, a lot of people kind of struggle with what to do in those times. How do you deal with waiting seasons in the life? Like, how do you deal with that from your own personal, you know, experience? The best way to deal with the waiting season is to look it in the eye and acknowledge it as what it is. 
a waiting season. You know, half the time we're trying to get out of it. And that is, just, I just want to be out of this situation. I want to be out of this situation. So we never quite face it and realize, okay, I am in a waiting season. Everything has halted. Things are not moving. Okay, this is where I am. You know, the Bible says, count it all joy when you step into diverse trials and temptation. But it also says that let patience have its thorough work. Mm, yes, yes. Do you understand? And entire lacking nothing. So I find that these seasons have actually, they come to stretch you. You know, sometimes I feel like God knows that if I let this child just be going and going and going, what she's building is not going to stand. It's not going to work. Mm. It's not sustainable. It's not going to be work. It may be successful now, but in 10 years, she wants to do this for 20. In 10 years, it's not going to work. You know what? I think I'm going to get her attention and have her look in another direction. So a lot of our seasons, most people waste waiting season because they are just looking at the season and say, please come and be going. Come and be going. Mm. Now. I want my life back. I want, I, know, I, want I want my money back, you know? And then they look at where they really are and the opportunities that God is laying right in front of them. They can't see it because they are obsessed with change. You know? Mm. Hard seasons are hard seasons and as long as you are human, it will come. I go through my hard seasons. I go through very difficult times. I go through periods where I'm thinking, oh my God, if I could jump off a cliff and not die, I'll do it right now. I just <laughs> seize exactly for about three weeks. I'll come back after. <laughs> I know. You know? I know. Day with a headache and I had photographer's coma and I was discouraged because maybe the structure that I had set up for my business wasn't strong enough to carry the demand that I have sometime. Every business goes through its challenges, you know, but I think that if you consider it all Hi, T.Y. Okay. Okay. Okay, sorry, guys. The network, T.Y. had to... T.Y. is joining us again. It isn't able to join. Okay, so... And it have never happened this way. Yes. Sorry, T.Y. <laughs> okay. Hey, Jodie. So, thank I you so me? much, T.Y. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Um, 
I love everything you said about waiting season. And what you said is as long as you're human, these times are going to come, you okay. know, but they come, they come as gifts to us. Well, I guess we don't, sometimes we don't actually take what is there for us because we're busy trying to. <laughs> Something. It is deception because everybody you think is your competition. They look like they are doing well. Everybody's living oh. in they always have clients, they always have money, they have everything going. It's a lie. There's no one without struggle. Their struggle is different from your struggle. So mm. you feel like you're failing. You're not failing. You're just human. And you're just on planet Earth. And as long as you're on mm. planet Earth, you will have challenges in your business. It's just not... In fact, planet Earth, like Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> On top of being in Planet Earth, then there is now Nigeria, that which is <laughs> which is an entirely different thing. <laughs> Again. Oh my God! <laughs> you don't even have to try. You just sit, and then the arrows just be coming. You be dodging. You be dodging. I know. Don't get overwhelmed. Don't think that there's anybody out there that has a secret potion that they're doing. You know, there will always, always be seasons of wait. But I've looked yes. at my life. Those seasons have led to my best seasons in what wow. I do. Yes. Wow. They have wow. always led to more. But only when I don't resent the season. Yes. And I'm like, okay, what's really going on here? You know? And when I sit with it for a long time, then I start to get perspective. You know, it's about perspective. It might be that the trouble is beckoning you to reposition. Mm. It might be trouble is beckoning you to change your strategy, you know. Mm. It might be that is beckoning you to change what you offer, and and your and your and your approach to business. Like, why would people hire you? What is it mm. that you carry? Now, if you build your business on on graces that I have, when God has given me certain graces, I do those things without even trying. You know, yes. after graces that I have, you will struggle. But yes, wow. That mm. you never have, you know, and if I build my business based on what you do with ease and thinking that it'll be easy for me, I will have issues. Mm. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's so yeah, deep. That like, if you build, if you if you try to build your business on the graces that someone else has, so it comes so easy to that person, and you're trying, you're looking at it, you're like, okay, I'm going to do it like this, I'm going to do it like, this. but like, it's such, it's so much of a struggle for you. Wow. I can relate to, you know, the waiting times being, you know, the time that changed, radically changed or became one of the best times afterwards. Because after my first daughter, I resented that time right because i got pregnant i was like after i gave birth i was like no but i'm always doing this i'm always jumping no i can just after the next three weeks i can do this i can go back to work i resented it so much right and it almost it, it almost drained the life out of me and by my second daughter i was like you know what i don't care i'm gonna take time off it doesn't matter i'm just gonna enjoy this time something is happening to me right now and I'm not just going to ignore the fact that, you know, my life is changing and let me receive that. So what, what can you speak about, you know, because see why you've been in this for over 20 years and it means that your life has evolved consistently over oh, yeah. that time. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, and, and I think sometimes we underestimate the fact that our lives will eventually evolve right? Or we either, we either we, sometimes you can't really prepare for those things, right? But it's going to come at you, right? So at every different stage that your life has evolved, did you see it coming? Has there been a way that you needed to, you know, look at your life again or look at your work or look at, you know, your, either your approach to work or like what you'd say? I, I don't know how to explain it. That has now helped you to be in a better place so that, you know, these things are not essentially moving you out but strengthening you to become better okay i'll give my own testimony you talked about motherhood hmm. yes own, so i went from long fertility treatments to having to stop work because of those treatments eventually to the glory of god falling pregnant and then okay. having to stop work entirely for a long season now what happens when you are birthing one thing and you have to put something else on hold is 
I, I remember God kept telling me, forget photo. You are birthing. Wow. The most beautiful thing. You, this one, you're not birthing. You are not created. I am creating inside of you. So we are working wow. together. Can we just stay focused and just do this thing? And, and that was just the permission that I needed from God. That it was okay to not be relevant as I did something. Wow. Else. It was okay. Wow. It was How okay to I not be relevant. Wow. It's okay. Look, it's okay to be not relevant for a season. It's okay. You can't, you can do it all, but you have to know when you can't. And you have to know that it's mm. fine to pause. Sometimes you don't have to be pregnant to pause. Somebody on this line, the prophetic is talking through me. Some of you need to pause for your mental health. You are just going, 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 and breaking yourself down to gain what? To gain a few claps, a few likes on Instagram. How much money is worth your mental, is worth your mind? Do you not realize that you are a steward of your own well-being? Do you understand? Nobody can keep, photography is tough. Think about it. So I'll go back to the pregnancy story, but do you realize what it takes for you to make images? Wow. Do you realize, first and foremost, you know, hunting for the client, getting the client, preparing for the client, getting to know the client, learning how to like the client, with delivering the work on time, if you are still able to do it. And then, do you understand, making sure that the person has had a good enough experience to keep the network going. It is work. And no one can sustain that non-stop. You need to learn to pause so you're not going on mad. You know, no losing. <laughs> no, it's for real. Yeah, because right, I, really true. I mean, this is real. This is real. Anxiety and depression. And they think that's, that's business as usual. You are breaking your body down, ruining your heart, ruining your blood vessels, ruining, you know, your blood pressure. And you think that that is work. All of us need to learn that this thing that we are doing is difficult. We need to set realistic goals and we need to know our limitations. Now, when I came back from having my, my kids, my first job was a big job and I was scared out of my mind. When I held the camera, I was like, do I even really know? Because I have been breastfeeding, I've been cleaning poo poo. How will I remember how to press shutter? I was so scared that the photos were going to suck. But guess what? Maybe they didn't rock as much as they did when I was on the go. But at least I started. And then I built up slowly. And you know mm. what happens a lot of times is when you have this time in hiatus or in stepping back, you don't realize that it gets your creative juices flowing. You have new vision. Your ideas are clearer. Your personal self is enlarged. Yes, your mind might be anxious as hell because you don't know if people still recognize remember you know you're calling your clients and you're like ty this is ty like, ty who you know it's like you've been away for too long and too people long but excuse me in waiting seasons you grow in waiting seasons you enlarge in waiting seasons you get your best ideas and some of the ideas that i've run my business by in the last six years are ideas that came to me while i stopped working as a mother Wow. Yeah. But it's not easy. I'm just not like <laughs> No, it's not easy, and that's why I had to mention because you know it's we it's it's such right. a struggle because you know it's almost like we just keep going and going. You know, you want to, you want those money, the money to keep coming, even when you know that you've taken more than because it's also a thing like because people now they're photographers that take more than they actually have the capacity to serve. And people <laughs> because not always greedy is fear. Hmm. Really? What? What? How? Why? Why do you say so? To why? Body is so low that they just want to be collecting money. I mean, if they were that greedy, they wouldn't be doing this work. They would find there are more. If it's greed that is driving you, you know that there are better options for you to make money like like that. You know that photography is a business that you're going to have to build relationships on over the years, even if it's corporate photography or aerial photography. It's not. It, I don't know why it is for everybody, but it builds, but not as quickly. 
Now, a lot of times when work comes and people pile on work and pile on, it's not because they are greedy. It's because they are afraid that mm. if I don't take it, somebody else will take it and it mm. might not. Let me ju let's just take it first. They will know how I get to manage ourselves. You know? So a lot of times it is fear. And that fear is understandable. But you see, like I said, when you have true support, then when seasons like that come and opportunities come that are heavier than the strength of your structure, that's when you need your friends. You know, that's when you need mm. to call and right. say, your job and come and join my business for two weeks or I will die. You know, and it's, it's having those kind of business relationships where we can call on each other. And I do that. I have people that I call on and I'll be like, See why it's gonna you <laughs> if you don't come and help me, it's over. I can't do this any wow. more everywhere that I can call and say, Hey, I need you to step in for me and come in and join our team for a very short period and because wow. we need our hands. Wow, that's so powerful, T Y. Thank you so much. Thank especially this, you know, having that support, having that support. And quite a number of creatives don't have that support. There is that thing of, you know, you know, your child struggling and you're just struggling in silence. You know, people see you and you're just, you know, you're they are hailing you, but you know that back end you're struggling in silence because it's almost like there is that either either, you know, I don't know whether it's the pride or feeling, you know, just not being in a position where you can say, oh, I can't, you can't, I can't handle this anymore. Or, you know, I need help. Or I need, so how would you, what would you say to someone that is in that place where they are always, everything is all by themselves, right? They are doing every single thing themselves and they really don't know. They need help, right? They are well known. People love their work, but they are struggling. Are you describing me? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm not describing you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, Let's take a poll on here. Can everybody who is struggling say, I, I, sir? We are quickly tight. Don't lie. We are, we are 10 seconds. Let's see. Who's struggling? Who's finding it a bit difficult? And I mean, you guys, you better talk right now because I find this thing a, a lot. In fact, I tell my team, I'm just like, I don't know how people are doing this thing because like, I, I, see. I, 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 hey, finger up in the air. Four fingers in the air. Six fingers. Hey, hey, I, I, I. Somebody say hi. I, 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 I. So we are a community of struggling people that refuse to help each other. You know, everybody wants to look like their lives are completely polished. Hmm. Don't die. Go and go and die. Yo. High blood pressure is real. Mental breakdown is real. Depression is real. Anxiety is real. We need to, you know, we need, you need to kind of, um, we need to find help. We need to call out to each other. Do you understand? And 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 find find make friendships. And at least sometimes even tell your clients that, yeah, I know that you said that you want, but I really need a little bit more time to do this and this and this because at this time and and if you are really sincere and you take up your superwoman or superman kit, most people now understand. I mean, if it's a pre wedding photo, they have the, they need the photo before the wedding. So <laughs> you can't bring a beautiful wedding cake after the reception is over. Of course. I the cake is. Do you understand? But, you know, sometimes the woman is going to have to say, I know I offered you like a 14 tier cake, but I'm sorry, it's going to have to be eight because it's not. You know, I'm being sincere, I'm being truthful, you know, and letting people know that you're not trying to take from them, but that, that you're here to serve them to the best of your ability. Do you understand? It's also knowing what your limitations are and communicating those limitations within your business and not being afraid that you will lose work. See, people would rather work with someone who's sincere. Do you understand? And work with someone who's so slick but will let them down. I mean, you can let mm -hmm. people 
this is where I am right now. I really would love to serve you. And then don't be so scared. There's <laughs> Nigeria is the most populous black nation. There's a lot of business. It, it goes round. You know, there's enough room for you. Don't worry about someone else taking your space. No one can take your space. The moment you take time out to find out why you're doing this, what you carry, what makes you special, you will always find room. You will always find work, you know. And those who don't know God, I think that he's a very big factor. In, even if it's just for receiving direction and receiving instruction. And yeah, because that was going to be my next question. Like the role, like what, has, what role has God played in your, uh, you know, your journey? Yeah. <laughs> you hope. Work. God gives you hope, you know, knowing that you're going to have a life and success beyond your own personal resources. You know, the Bible says that, you know, God supplies your need according to his riches in glory. God doesn't use your resources to supply your needs. Do you understand? To realize that the work that you do is for you to express God's glory, really. Yes, you will work to pay your bills. Yes, you will do all those. But it is God that makes sure those things are sorted. You know, mm. you need to understand that you know, there's a God out there that loves you and will support you and will help you and will send you help, you know, when you ask. So that's why I say mm. feel like they can do it by themselves and they're struggling. If you've never tried asking God, you know, I can't recommend to you that which I don't know. I don't have a rich uncle that I can go ask for anything. So I know that I can only ask God for help and usually that's where I go. I ask God for help and then usually I'm led to now go and make people say, or can you help me with this? Or can you help me with that? Wow. Thank you so much, Tiwai. So we're going to take a few questions because, again, in a few minutes, Tiwai is going to be going. So if you have questions for Tiwai, please send in your questions. We'll take a few of them. <laughs> we'll take a few questions. We'll take a few questions. You said there is enough room for you. What would you say to the young photographers that before the questions coming in, you know, that, that are coming in right now, seeing like seeing where photography is, seeing where the industry is, what do you what do you what do you think is most needed? What do you think people should be doing more of now? I think people need to be practicing more, experimenting more, learning more, growing. I think what happens is that when you jump in and you become commercial immediately. Now, I understand that reality is you were working at a bank and then your salary and now you are holding cameras, so you must make money. I get it. I get it. I understand. But you must set time out for personal growth, both in your craft, in your art. You must find time to be inspired outside of photography because very few times will photography be your sole source of inspiration. Otherwise, you just be bringing out the same kind of work that looks like somebody else's work. I had a conversation with um, Pa Yusuf Grillo, who just passed away. And he said that, you know, you take everything in, you know, and described it as when you go to a buffet, you sit down, you see Chinese food, Oibo food, Nigerian food, a little bit of everything. Mm. But you them of retaining only that which you need. So there's nothing... Wow getting is inspiration from everywhere everywhere right you know and in re retaining what you have retained you will grow and find your own way you know i feel like most people are thrust into this machinery that is almost blowing you to succeed succeed blow 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 blow, blow today blow blow and <laughs> running as if they're chasing you from the village running 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 the photo you are taking, you haven't grown. You don't have time. Mm. You know? so, so make time for yourself. Make time to grow spiritually. Make time to grow mentally. Make time to grow good friendships. A lot of reasons why people don't have friends. Because they're always working. Some people working, are, very true. But, but um, I, think, I think that's the one thing that I would say. You know, okay. if you make that time it pays off because then you find your distinction and that distinction is where the value is. Wow. The distinction is where the value is. Okay. So let's take a few questions. Um, Demi asked, how have you been able to remain consistent in your craft despite the constant change in the industry? Okay. So for me, my craft is kind of like makeup. So 
when I started doing portraits, there was a season that came that everybody was wearing green eyeshadow. Green eyeshadow and very thin eyebrows. I did not grill. I did not join. Because I knew that that season would pass and what would people feel about their images. So from the very beginning, I set up, also because I have a, um, a foundation in beauty, you know, I have always, my entire life has always been about how do I make people look good? You know, how do I do something to someone to make them look at themselves and think, oh, this is me, this is, you know, I love that. So I made up my mind that I, I would find what I did well and I was going to stay there. And that there was nothing wrong with staying there. Because if I stayed mm. there, I would, you know, I gave myself time as a young photographer to try everything, everything. Loki, Aiki, Salt, Hash, Bugwe. But I now found out what it was that I did that was consistent. And I found out that what I really do sell is not just photography, but an experience. Do you understand? I am able to bring encouragement to people and make them realize just what they carry. And that's what I really do. And I found a way to build a business around that. Do you understand? And because it wasn't about a style of photography, whenever styles change, I stayed where I was. They will bring, mm. where I am. They will bring this other stuff. I'll stay. It doesn't mean I'm not growing. It doesn't mean I'm not learning. Like one of the most, I spent more money on, I have spent more money on um, hitting myself as a photographer than I ever have on equipment. Do you understand? I would, you know, whenever I find something I don't understand or find someone that inspires me, either I physically stalk them or if it's not humanly possible, I will stop the work. I'll be looking, 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 understanding the code, what is going here. So yeah. I, I think that, not that you should be you should not want to change but you should know the things that shouldn't change there are certain things about my work that i'm okay i don't need to change that i like it i find it beautiful my clients find it beautiful enough to come to me and they came to me because of what i do so i don't see why i should try and make mine look like hers or like his wow wow thank you so much ty wow so you should know the thing that shouldn't change. And I love what you said about you've spent more money in educating and developing yourself than you've ever spent on gear. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. So Samuel said, how do we know we're in a waiting season? How do I know I'm in a waiting season? <laughs> <laughs> no, waiting means that you're halting now. Usually life yeah. moves in a that you're used to and suddenly those things that come together to make progress are not coming together do you understand whether it be the kind of exposure finance um requests for work um progress that like every the things that come together to make progress happen for you are not quite coming together the way they were then you know you're in a waiting season and, and that could be anything for it's different things for different people, you know. Right. Then you know. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Ty. Okay, we're okay. just gonna take the last question. And um, someone said, "I'm trying to make a comeback, but I get seriously nervous every time I hold the camera. Feels like I will fail, and this messes me up eventually. How can I overcome this?" So that feeling will never go away until you shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot until it goes away. You will always feel like that when you're making a comeback. You're going to feel nervous. You're going to feel like you're going to fail. But really, I know shooting a ghost. Now you might be able to shoot too. So it's very, as long as you're focused and you have good exposure, thankfully you're shooting with a digital camera. So don't think about it as complicated as it is. Put together everything else that you need to make sure that you are in good success so for instance at the time when you're unsure make keep your lighting very nice and simple you know don't set yourself up for failure you know but realize that that nervous feeling only goes away with practice and one day you will and actually you don't feel like that anymore you know it doesn't announce its exit it's, it's exit you know it it, it just de 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 depletes and diminishes as you work and work and work and very soon you are drawn into your own work 
you know, realize that your own work is an entity in itself. You understand? Mm. It stays with you. The way you work, your creativity, the giftings that God has given you, the graces upon your life, all those things are actually real entities that come together to cooperate with you to make a success out of your life. Wow. Thank you so much, T.Y. Honestly, oh. um, you know, I, I can wrap up everything that we... Um, what that we've said now by the 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 what you said about the the distinction is where the value is, right? Like almost everything that we've talked about, you know, all the process, you know, having to do this is almost like you go through these different periods, and depending on how you 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 know you go through them, it helps you find yourself. And when you find yourself, you start to find that thing that stands you out. And when you now hold on to that thing, that actually becomes the value that people now start to see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Guys, I, we have to go right now because <laughs> I promised you why that we're not going to stay longer than this. <laughs> we this have has, so many questions. I, this has been so good. Yeah. And this has been. Well, all in very similar boats. You know. Sorry, and sorry, too, well, I didn't get that. Water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay okay no problem too can you take one more question let me just oh. yes okay someone said how do you get your desired clients to notice your work when you just started so you you may not have your desired clients but you have mm. the so you work for the client that you, that you have like they are your desired clients you know, you, you might you might be wanting to shoot Beyonce, but perhaps is Auntie Grace <laughs> from this standing down. <laughs> Client. <laughs> from the saloon down the road. Like, <laughs> I, every client the client you have is a client you have. Put your best into it. And before you know it, once you start creating the quality of work that is good enough for Beyonce, Beyonce will call you. Very true. Very true. Thank you so much, T.Y. So you guys, please certainly say thank you to T.Y. This has been so amazing. T.Y., this has been phenomenal. It has been a blessing. And it's just good. It just feels so good that, you know, you really came down to making every one of us understand that whatever it is you're struggling with is not unique to you. Like you might see this perfect picture on the gram on all of these things and you feel like, Everybody is going through different, but it's now the way you work through it and also making us understand the power of relationships, the power of people, because I believe people are really the ones that drive so many things. The power of, you know, people coming together and working together and, you know, drawing strength from each other at different times. So this has just been incredibly amazing. Thank you so, so much. Thank you for being a blessing to us all. <laughs> love, love, love you. All right. Bye, T.Y. Bye. Thank you, guys. <laughs>